On the docket tonight, Elaine Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein's, uh, I guess, uh, groomer and uh, fellow sex abuser, scheduled to be sentenced tomorrow. Court TV legal correspondent Julie Janae has more tonight. A unanimous jury has found Glenn Maxwell guilty of one of the worst crimes imaginable, facilitating and participating in the sexual abuse of children, crimes that she committed with her longtime partner and co-conspirator Jeffrey Epstein. Ghislaine Maxwell, longtime girlfriend of disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein, was convicted for her role in the recruitment and sexual abuse of young girls last December. Now she could spend the rest of her life in prison. Maxwell and Epstein had a method. Typically, they would befriend these young girls by asking them questions about their lives, pretending to be taking an interest in them. They would take them to the movies and treat them to shopping trips. Maxwell would encourage these young girls to accept offers from Epstein to pay for their travel and their education, making these young victims feel indebted to Jeffrey Epstein. Investigators say Maxwell played a key role in what has long been believed to be a sex trafficking operation that spanned decades and crossed continents. After developing a rapport with the victims, Maxwell then tried to normalize sexual abuse with a minor victim through a process known as grooming. For example, Maxwell would discuss sexual topics with the victim and undress in front of the victim or be present for sex acts involving the minor victims and Epstein. Maxwell's presence as an adult woman helped put the victims at ease. The road to justice has been far too long. I want to commend the bravery of the girls, now grown women who stepped out of the shadows and into the courtroom. Their courage and willingness to face their abuser made this case possible. Maxwell's guilty verdicts came two years after Jeffrey Epstein's own indictment in 2019 on federal sex trafficking charges of minors in Florida and New York, but he never stood trial. Guards found Epstein in his jail cell unresponsive. The medical examiner ruled his death a suicide. The defense is asking for a more lenient sentence, arguing that Maxwell has no criminal history, is over 60 years old, is not a danger to the community, and poses no risk of recidivism. No matter the outcome, Maxwell's attorneys say they will appeal the verdicts after a motion for a mistrial based on alleged juror misconduct was denied by the trial judge. Okay, this sentencing scheduled for tomorrow but take a look on your screen folks this was a letter written by the defense asking for a postponement i write to inform the court of a recent development which may require postponement of tuesday's sentencing proceeding yesterday without having conducted a psychological evaluation without justification the mdc placed ms maxwell on suicide watch she is not permitted to possess and review legal documents and is not permitted paper or pen. This has prevented her from preparing for sentencing. This morning, a psychologist evaluated Ms. Maxwell and determined she is not suicidal. I met with Ms. Maxwell today. She is not suicidal. Currently, she is unable to properly prepare for sentencing. If Ms. Maxwell remains on suicide watch, is prohibited from reviewing legal materials prior to sentencing, becomes sleep deprived, and is denied sufficient time to meet with and confer with counsel, we will be formally moving on Monday for an adjournment. Let's bring back in Darnell Crossland, Al Wunsch. Um, anytime you're talking about the Epstein case and we're talking about suicide, red flags, all right, everyone's aware. What's going on here, Al? It's like people are saying, the, 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 the MDC, which I believe is the correction facility, is saying she's suicidal, she's suicidal. Uh, and, and we've got doctors saying she's not, the, her own lawyer saying she's not. Like usually your own lawyer, you have an ethical obligation if your client is suicidal to, to protect that, that client, right? So what's going on yeah. here, Al? Why all this well, talk about you know, suicide? Because they're... Look, she is the only person we have to get some sort of retaliation against uh, Epstein, okay? So they want to make sure that she gets to the 
uh, courtroom that she gets sentenced and that she serves her sentence and that she does not kill herself. And I think that they're walking on eggshells that any activity that would lead, lead one to believe that she is not thinking clearly is going to send up that red flag you spoke of and throw her into a suicide watch. I think that it's probably unfair and it's probably not correct, but I do believe that based on what happened with the jail and what happened with people involved with the Epstein case, that anyone around this woman is saying that we don't need to have some sort of a, a conspiracy theory come out that she was silenced the way Jeffrey Epstein was. Darnell, what what do you think's going on here? And, um, you know, if she doesn't make it to sentencing, um, are we to believe it would be a suicide? Because they said they put her on suicide watch, even though the psychologist is saying she's not suicidal and her attorneys are saying she's not suicidal. Well, a couple things. Uh, one, since you've introduced introduced us all to this place called Crazy Town, it seems like everyone is living in that town now. Um, because MDC, um, if, if you've been there, and I've been there many times, uh, is right next to the courthouse at 100 Center Street. They have sufficient security. Uh, they have sufficient... Are all the cameras and working because, tonight? Are the cameras working tonight? Oh, the camera... Yeah, yes. Yes, just like with Epstein, the cameras mysteriously wasn't working that night, um, and which is something that uh, I'm, the jury's still out in my head on that. Um, so uh, it's pretty bizarre. So the cameras should be working. We learned from Epstein, and again, they have sufficient security. The lawyers are absolutely correct. When it comes to a sentencing presentation, you have to be prepared. I'm never too hopeful that, especially in cases like this, that the judge is gonna uh, listen and be moved by anything, because it's not the jury that's listening to the presentation. But we still wanna put our best foot forward. We wanna make sure that our clients are ready to speak. We wanna make sure that we're able to review the documents and we know what they're gonna say. If they have her strapped in some kind of suicide garment, no pen, no paper, uh, unable to prepare, then I think that's a deprivation of her rights. And I, I think the attorneys were absolutely correct and asking for either an adjournment or for the sentencing to be put off. And, and that's true. You know, if you're in this suicide watch, I don't know if people understand that, you know, you are stripped and you're wearing like basically a, a bib that goes from your, you know, from your neck down and you are kept in a room. You're not allowed to have anything to, to read or anything to write with or anything at all. And it is psychologically very damaging. So if she's not in the right frame of mind, what's the difference? Why can't they give a couple of days to well, get her Let me ask you this, though, about the actual it. suicide watch. Do we think that MDC is doing that as a, a preventative measure? Because if she ends up dead, I mean, that is going to be the end of this. I mean, it, it's already bubbled up to a point where nobody, not nobody, but a large majority of the people watching my show tonight uh, have a lot of questions about the death of Jeffrey Epstein. She, obviously, based upon the evidence at trial, um, had access and was there for all of this, uh, for most of it, if not all of, of what Jeffrey Epstein was doing. So whatever information he had, she has. If she ends up dead, it's a huge problem. If she commits suicide, no one's going to believe that either. So is, is that the real reason to put her on suicide watch uh, more as a CYA, uh, Darnell? No, 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 absolutely not. And so what we have to remember is this. Um, she's already been convicted. So it's just a matter of what her sentence will be. So if she kills herself, then she she sentenced herself to the death penalty. Um, but so it's not about her. They're not saying, oh my God, we don't want that type of sentence. That's too harsh. Why don't you stay alive so we can give you life? What they're saying is that they screwed up with Epstein. Right. And they, they don't want that to happen again. But then you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just because you messed up with your cameras and whatever they did at MDC, the Metropolitan Sentencing Center, um, uh, you can't now say that we're going to infringe on her right to prepare for a sentencing just so that uh, we can cover ourselves now because we messed up before. No, get better cameras, get, get better security, but don't infringe on her right to prepare for her sentencing presentation. These things are very important. They have the Booker case, uh, the Booker factors, uh, that they're going to be trying to argue that she has no criminal history, that um, that the court considered 3553A factors in the federal court. 
Um, there's all these things that you have to prepare for in a federal sentencing, and it can't happen without her there. It Did you say 3558? 3553A. Oh, okay. 3553, 3554, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. That's what you got to do. <laughs>